Jazz here. So today's video, I'm really excited about this one. It's near and dear to my heart uh, since I've had back surgery in the past, but this is preventing lower back pain, uh, your day-to-day -day lower back pain. Now just a little disclaimer, if you have sustained a previous injury, this is not meant to be a complete guide to helping you overcome an injury so uh, this is meant to be uh, something to uh, help you alleviate uh, your lower back pain that's caused uh, from daily stress. Uh, so it's not uh, an extensive tutorial on every single back problem out there, but hopefully it will help you out. Uh, so from my experience, a lot of lower back pain, in fact, most lower back issues are gonna stem from one of the following three problems. And the number one thing I'm going to cover is just overall flexibility. Now, the problem with our flexibility in general as a population is that we're primarily just sedentary, or even if we are working out or training, that we're not getting enough flexibility work in or uh, enough, to stim to, enough to get to the optimal range of motion, particularly in the hamstrings. We're gonna see that manifested a lot. So anytime we have tightness in the hamstrings, that's going to come all the way up the uh, kinetic chain to the lower back, and then also the ankles a lot as well. So calves and ankles, tight calves and ankles, uh, the way you walk, every single step is gonna throw a lot of other things out of alignment, uh, particularly the hips. If your hips are out of alignment, your lower back's gonna have problems. So flexibility, uh, we wanna make sure we have adequate mobility of the hamstrings, the uh, ankles, think about the spine or the body in general just walking around on a daily basis is placing compressive force on your spine if you've trained with me in the past you've probably heard me mentioning compressive force so anytime you're doing a squat a deadlift that's placing compressive force in the spine but anytime you're walking running you're also uh, gravity is placing compressive force on your body so what what that means for you is everything's being pulled together. So basically, we need to decompress at some point. So there's a lot of different ways to do that. There's inversion, there's a couple simple ways, and uh, stretching, correct stretching of the hamstrings and the back are going to give you some decompression of the spine. So that uh, is a vital step to start including, and even if you are including it, if your hamstring flexibility isn't uh, optimal if you aren't be able, if you aren't able to go through a full leg lift to where you're able to get your your leg up to 90 degrees at least in front of your body, then you really need to work on that. And that alone should help you out with your lower back pain. The first technique I'm going to show is a proprioceptive neuromuscular facilitation stretch for the hamstrings, or P and F stretch. This has been shown to be the most effective way to prevent chronic injury improve hamstring elasticity, as well as increasing athletic performance. The reason it's so effective is we are able to quickly and effectively increase joint range of motion with a combination of muscular contraction and stretching. So the way the stretch works is you're going to work with a partner and the partner will uh, put you under a forced hamstring stretch uh, for about 10 seconds then you're going to contract, resist against the stretch for another 10 seconds and repeat that three times. So 10 second uh, stretch, 10 second contraction. Each time you should be able to go deeper into the stretch. Now it is important that you are working the stretch with somebody you can communicate with uh, because there is inherent risk of injury if they push you too far into the stretch. So it has to be a gentle tension. Uh, you, so you, you definitely want to make sure you are working with somebody that you trust uh, to help you through this movement. So give it a try. Hopefully it helps you out. Again, 10-second stretch, 10-second muscular contraction. Uh, message me or comment for more questions on how to complete this effectively and why it works the way it does, if you have any questions on that. The next technique is a back stretch. I like using the TRX for this, and this is going to help facilitate some of that decompression for the spine I was talking about. So we're stretching the lats and then also by placing our hips back, we are allowing the spine to stretch apart slightly. So 
Uh, again, by tucking the chin and looking up here, I am facilitating that spinal range of motion. I want to exhale as I pull my chin towards my chest and inhale as I come back up. You can utilize this not only on a TRX, but really any type of bar. Give it a try. Number two for lower back health is the weight you're training. So typically, if you're working out regularly, whether you're working out with a trainer or you're working out on your own, I'm going to say that 90% of your movements are going to be in one plane of motion, which is forward to back. So we're moving linearly. Now what's, what's wrong with that? So we have our squats, our lunges, our bench press. They're all great exercises, right? They're all, you know, improving our body composition, uh, getting stronger, so, you know, we're feeling good. But why are we getting hurt outside the gym? Why does, why does it hurt when we try to, you know, just uh, like pick up a bag of groceries or twist or turn? Because you're not training the muscles to work together correctly. So even though you're strengthening, you're training in a linear plane of motion, which would be the sagittal plane front to back. Uh, so we also have to train side to side, which would be a uh, frontal plane. So we're basically just like a lateral step, a side squat, those would be a side lunge, those would be examples of movements in the frontal plane. Now transverse plane is a little bit trickier. So that means rotation. So we're either rotating or resisting rotational force. Uh, so a good example would be a wood chopper exercise with a cable or a band. I'm going to show that one. So the low high wood chopper is one of my favorite uh, transverse plane movements. It's fairly simple and it doesn't take a lot of resistance on this. So I, I prefer using a band. Now it's not a movement, again, that's going to be something you're going to train super heavy. You don't really need to focus on the weight, but more just the contraction of the obliques, uh, twisting, pivoting at the hips and getting the feet moving correctly. So again, it's going to be, um, great for injury prevention, just making sure the body is moving correctly together and you're able to connect, uh, from the ground up to generating that rotational force through the band. So give it a try, incorporate it into your routine. I like throwing these in with ab work. They go very nicely in with that or hit or, uh, you know, right before your cardio. So I, that's where I like to program them in for my athletes and clients. Again, give it a try. Make sure you are incorporating one to two movements in the transverse plane in each workout uh, to maximize your results. Now, the last one, the last one uh, is going to be something you probably heard of before, and that's just strengthening the core. But typically, when we think about strengthening the core, we're thinking about the rectus abdominis. We're thinking about that six pack muscle, you know, looking beach ready. But that's not the core. That's, that's part of the core but we also have a lot of other muscles in there we need to engage that are underlying. So the transverse abdominis, the internal obliques, the serratus anterior, as well as the glutes. So the core is going to include pretty much every single muscle that stabilizes the spine and the glutes are a big one. So you may have heard that strengthening your glutes will help your lower back, which is very true, but strengthening all those muscles together in the way that they are meant to work together is going to help you out long term versus just trying to strengthen one muscle over the other. So making sure we are strengthening the core uh, correctly, the way, it's, the way it's meant to work together, right? So there's a lot of different exercises and protocols and pretty much when you are conscious of your movement and the way that your body should feel, the way the muscle should feel on each specific movement, you're going to be able to, you're really going to notice that if you're doing your movements correctly, you are strengthening those core muscles. So you're breathing correctly. You're squeezing when you should squeeze. You're gripping the ground with your, uh, with your feet. Um, you know, you're really activating your entire kinetic chain uh, throughout each and every movement. So being conscious of what you should be feeling and experiencing throughout your exercise versus just trying to get through and get it over with. So that's gonna help you out big time. Uh, but hopefully uh, this, uh, this quick little tutorial helped you out. 
I would love to hear some feedback. I want to get you guys a little bit more involved on some other uh, exercises you'd like to hear me uh, demonstrate or uh, you know techniques. You know why we do this, why we uh, you know why we would choose one exercise over the other, or um, really just anything you'd like to hear me cover in general. Uh, so look forward to hearing from you guys. Uh, have a great day and we will see you guys soon.